Good afternoon, good day, good evening. If you see it tomorrow, good morning. I just got through saying my incantation. I didn't meditate like I normally would this morning, but I have been conscious of being in my body. I've been going through a lot of healing, um, introspection, uh, emotion, all the things that everybody is experiencing. And so I wanted to provide a hopefully safe space for us to come in here and to be with each other and to nurture one another and to be available uh, to whatever way God wants to use this space so that we can get some emotional health happening. There's more upheaval coming, right? There's more uh, things getting ready to be revealed. Um, There's more uh, space and empathy that we are probably going to have to create and practice for one another. Forgiveness for one another. Love. Love to me, especially in this moment in time, a great definition is a state of allowance. Allowing things to be what they are, allowing your emotions to show up, allowing allowing them a constructive space to be released, allowing them to be heard, not judging yourself out of them so that they become suppressed or repressed and then they come out like anger because they can. And if they do, hopefully you don't do anything that hurts yourself and you can make that okay because there's so much expression here. So many of people want to know what to do. So many of us are like, well, what's right to do? So many of us are are stuck in our throat chakra. We're stuck because you don't know what to say. You don't want to say the wrong thing. Hey, everybody. So I I know I'm probably going to ask some questions to help us get our expressions out. And then we're going to turn our sights to what we do want. Because I think that a lot of us might be consumed with what we don't want. Right? It's easy to get consumed with what you don't want. Because it's in our faces constantly. It's in our energetic space constantly. And we're trying to grapple with our emotions about it. And so we may even forget to focus on that which we do want. What does it look like? A lot of us don't even have a vision for it. And maybe the current set of circumstances doesn't make you feel like you can believe in it. So how's everybody doing? Hey, everybody. Welcome. (laughs) Thank you. Hey, I didn't even see all these comments coming up. Oh, my goodness. Yes, want and need calm and joy. Yes, that's what we're going to see about cultivating. And we're also going to see about giving you a a space to really express yourself right where you are. I want to deal with whatever upheaval um, you have and deal with whatever fearful thoughts you might have right now and deal with whatever um, things you're grappling with and you don't understand because there's a lot of stuff out here right now. There's a lot of stuff that can't do. You know, I spoke with someone today this music isn't too loud I spoke with someone today and she was like what's real anymore I was like that's a good question because a lot of people are like well well, well." I mean now they're saying it's it's these people and it's that and you know you're finding out that maybe there's a lot of things you can't trust or you don't trust anymore it's kicking you out of your old reality and it's uncomfortable why these comments aren't moving up yeah yeah um yeah a lot of people you are numbing to what's happening or some of us are finally feeling and it's like so uncomfortable right you're feeling at such an intense level that it's like well where do we escape and on top of it you're quarantined in a lot of places which is like now you're just sitting in it what to do you don't have your your spaces that you go to to normally let off that energy you're not communing with your loved ones maybe the way that you normally would to let off that energy 
me see what you guys are saying. Welcome, everybody. We're going to see about getting to a healthy center before we leave this conversation. Hey, Dee Dee. Hey, LaShonda. Hey, Renata. Zamora. Mike. Bless up, girl. <laughs> uh, Tasha. Um, hey, Charles. Hey, Jorday. Hey, Joe Joey. Uh, Renata says, I think a lot of us are numb and want to get to something that can bring the best, biggest changes and understanding. Yes. And you know what? I think that that's going to also come from allowing things to be what they are right now. As uncomfortable as it is, this is something that we have to allow to play out. And, you know, for some people, a word that they might use for the space that we're in right now is that we're dealing with a collective karma. There's a lot of things we've been letting slide. There's a lot of ways that we've been um, desensitized through media, programming, you know, like what we watch. It kind of can get you more and more distant from your humanity, feeling for other people, not being um, selfish. letting capitalism take us away, you know? And so um, I, I do think that a lot of this is a balancing and it's beyond a balancing. I think we're being birthed into a new earth, but it's uglier before it's prettier. Like how many of us know that so many of us are being cracked wide open in a way that we haven't been cracked open either before or in a very long time or you're being reintroduced to your emotional self again uh, you're feeling for others or you're feeling period and it's it's intense and we're sitting in these emotions so I want to talk about that I want to talk about that hey Dee Dee oh good to see you too Brad so how is everybody feeling? And, and is there something you're afraid to express? But it's like, oh. I, am, I am endeavoring to create a safe space for you to express that, even if it's not popular. Because I think there's a lot of suppression going on. And um, that can turn into anger. It can turn into explosive behavior. And if, if, you, if you pay attention to planetary energy, we're in a lot of retrogrades, you guys. So it's going to kick a lot of behaviors up to the forefront. A lot of the things you might try to um, suppress about yourself could come to, the, sen to, to the, the surface and make you feel out of control. If you have anger issues, that could come up and out. So, you, you know, um, bringing our attention to that can maybe help us to stay present. Like right now, while we're talking, I want you guys to use your body for um, calm, okay? Uh, right now, be aware of where your feet are. And just put your attention on your feet. You don't have to move them, okay? Um, just be aware that they're there, wherever they are. Can you feel the energy and the space in your feet right where they are? I want you to keep your feet, keep yourself grounded by keeping awareness in your feet while we talk. And that can create a space of peace and calm so that we can have this conversation. Okay, so I'm going to just be reminding us to bring ourselves back to our feet. It's going to ground us while we have this conversation. And then for uh, females, males can do it too, but go to your womb area while you have your attention on your feet. This is something I'm practicing today. And it can keep us grounded while we talk about this because I want you guys to have a safe space to express because we may need it. You may find out that you're not the only one. Or, you know, a lot of uh, us may feel like you don't know how to express yourself right now. You may feel pressure to express yourself and not know how, what am I supposed to say? Um, am I going to say it as eloquently as someone else? Am I going to... Uh, show up strong or just show up with your authenticity. That's what I did the other day. I was like, ooh, I'm in an interesting space, but I want to honor this 2 o'clock. But maybe people need to see that. Maybe people need to be right. We're all feeling. 
we're all feeling. We're all feeling. Let's see, are you guys talking? This thing will not scroll up. Okay. Welcome to the conversation, everybody. As we're moving into the second half, Jorday says, this year has become a whirlwind for many. Good and bad. It's reawakening for some. Others, maybe not. Hmm. Well, we'll come back to that. Nancy says, I'm feeling hope. Good, honey. Like you said, it's going to get ugly before it gets better, but I'm hopeful change is coming. Me too. Charles says, I'm starting to see a lot of division within the African-American community because people can agree to disagree and have different opinions and still be able to get along. Speak on it. Ooh. Yeah, there's a lot happening right now. Um, mm. We can unpack that if you want. Kendra says the anger, the almost unbelievability of it all, as it's coming uh, so fast, almost speechless. Uh, you start to say words. <sighs> yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah, there's so much out there. Um, even to the point where people are telling you that what you're seeing, you're not even seeing. We're getting to the point where you're not even going to trust your own dang on existence. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, well, am I really here? I mean, yeah, we could we could go down that rabbit hole and say, well, actually, you're projecting yourself into this three-dimensional reality. But you live everywhere on the grid. And right now, your consciousness just happens to be here. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're here. We're all dealing with this emotional reality in this three-dimensional reality. And what I see. From a, from a hopeful standpoint, what I see from a love standpoint is that we are seeing what we've been saying we want to see. Um, power in numbers, love coming up, people coming together because they were moved in their heart space for humanity. Um, you know, a powerful thought surrounding even COVID. You know, people say, well, you know, they're trying to keep us locked up and keep us on martial law. And it's like, well, you know, divine might have this thing sold up so, so gangster that, you know, something like this happened and brought us all out into the public together regardless. And if everybody ain't falling off the planet in a week and a half, what happens to COVID? to that narrative what happens to us recognizing our resilience as a people together what happens to us you know some people are like well this is some people are fakely doing this it's fake you know they just jumping on well you know what we haven't seen this re reflection of fake in, the, in, in my lifetime how do you know that they're not really be, being moved in their heart space how do you know that their guilt isn't moving them into a space of healing who knows who, what do you want to see what do you want to see? Are you clear about that? Are you making room to allow people to grow, to shed something that you think is innately in them? Are we allowing that growth? Are we allowing ourselves to see things differently? Charles said, I have, I, I have to just stop watching videos and clips because I don't want the energy to, to enrage me. Yes, God is good. Yeah, and, be, and we got to be careful of uh, the sound bites, right? Getting these little bite-sized chunks that incite uh, rage or violence or, 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 or despair, sadness, um, helplessness, hopelessness. We're, we live in an age where, you know, these TikTok videos blow my mind they're able to do and you could do this from your app can you imagine what could be superimposed or made to look like it's real in order to push you to do something that may it, it may not even be based on something that even exists you can photoshop we can face tune we can i mean there's a lot that can be done and we can put it out there as content and you could believe it and run with it and then what so it's, I believe that it's also is requiring vigilance right now. And if you need to step away so that you can get back to your own discernment, your own critical thinking, I highly recommend it. Because there's a lot of talking heads out here and everybody's got an opinion. And if they say it passionately enough, they could convince you that it's real and it might not even be real. 
So that's why I like to talk about us getting into stillness at times and, and being able to sit with things and stepping away so that whatever spirit wants to say to you through you, because everybody's got a different filter, right? It may come through your filter completely different. But are you, are you aware of what it's trying to say to you for you and your journey? Maybe very different than what somebody else is projecting about it. Right? Almost 396 hours. What do you mean 300 what, Kendra? Uh, Shanika says, had trouble sleeping last night. Was a lot of pain physically and mentally. Bless up, honey. Thank you for sharing that. We're going we're gonna to see if we can get us to a better center. Uh, I feel like this year, Melanja says, has made me go through 18 different versions of myself. And there's still six months left. left. Uh, laugh out loud. But for real, I think more so now than ever, energies are being pulled on to rise more frequently than before. Yes. Coach Rose sending you my love. Bless up, Jeremy. Thank you. I'm sending love back. That's what's scary on top of what's already scary. Thank you guys for sharing from your uh, authenticity. That's what we need. Because you'd be surprised how many people probably feel like you are waiting for somebody to express so that they have a voice too. So many people are afraid to speak right now. So many are afraid to, of us are afraid to express from a real place. So many of us don't even know what our authenticity is. There's so much discovery going on right now. And I just hope that we're, we're practicing empathy not only for other people but for ourselves. Like really leave room for yourself to not know what to do right now. Really leave room for yourself to just kind of step away and not be pressured into doing anything. If that's what's needed. LaShonda says, started my uh, first Audible ever last night, a freebie, and I love it. Who would have known listening to Curtis 50 Cent Jackson new book would be so liberating? Needed a break after crying through George's memorial. I was overwhelmed, feeling great. All right, come on, range of emotions and allowance for it all. Nancy says, I feel you. The Latin community is split in supporting B uh, BLM because they are caught up in the what about us, not realizing it's also about our community because we go uh, too through police brutality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and equality. A win for black lives is a win for all, speak honey. Together we can make a difference and change the world. Yeah, and then, you know what? Thank you, uh, Nancy. We're dealing with this now, right? And then we can shift the focus and deal with the next thing. And then we can shift the focus and deal with the next thing. You know? Like there's a, um, a hey everybody, welcome to the conversation. Um, 300 police brutality videos in 96 hours. My goodness gracious, Lordy. Whoa. Um, oh, <laughs> let me just sit here for a second. So, you know, there's lots of thoughts, right? Um, about what to focus on and how to focus on it. And what's important to one person may not be as important to somebody else and vice versa. But I think that maybe a thought that we can entertain surrounding even that is just let's focus on one thing at a time. It doesn't mean that the other thing is getting neglected, but since we have the momentum here for this, let's go ahead and handle this. It's here for a reason. And then we can shift the focus. Because there's one, there's a debate that majorly happens with, well, you know, why, why is it okay? Why are we in, up in arms? And this is mainly in the black community. Why are we up in arms about, you know, cops killing black people? What about black people killing black people? And I said, okay. I get it, but I, two different things. Why do I say that for me? Because when we are paying someone with tax dollars to be in a position of authority, to make decisions on behalf of the public, it's different than when a civilian is having an issue with another civilian. You can protect yourself, you can fight each other, you can do whatever you want, but why did George Floyd, why couldn't anybody step in when George Floyd was having his experience? Because the cops have authority. That takes on a whole other level of responsibility. That's why they're two separate issues. 
And I don't like when I hear them get lumped together because I'm like, it's not really the same thing. Uh, they're both being dealt with in their respective ways. But when you're paying someone specifically to be in a position of authority and it's getting abused, because if we fight back, what happens? You're resisting arrest. If we fight back from the outside coming in, uh, they can, can ruin your life. You can get shot. You can, you can get taken to jail. You can, there's just so many other repercussions. So we're relying on the people that we're putting in those positions to, to, to handle us a certain way, to give us the, the space to get to the courthouse, to be judge and jury. They're taking that responsibility into their hands on the streets with abuse of power. That's not okay, right? So what we're dealing with anyway, feeling it's not okay. Civilians fighting civilians is another another thought altogether. But we're dealing with people that are public servants. Very different. Very different. Uh, Brad says, along with turning away from TV and social media for a while, I've been keeping my feelings and emotions under control with my head held high and remaining sane with everything that's been going on good for you, honey. I hope that you're finding healthy outlets for your emotions too. Because I think that we're all trying to figure out what, what is composure right now. So hopefully you're finding some healthy ways to let off the energy that may be inside of you. So if does anybody um, does anybody have anything else that they want to express about how they're feeling that may not make them feel good because we're about to shift the conversation. So, and I want to give you the opportunity to kind of air out whatever you're feeling so that it can be dealt with because you never know who else it might help, including yourself. So, hey everybody, welcome to the conversation. And let me know if this is helpful because I really felt like, um, I felt compelled to get on and kind of deal with some of the stuff that's coming up because there's so much information out there. There's so much and it can get very confusing and I wanted to, um, help to give some clarity to any and all of it because I'm, I'm aware of a lot of it so I just want to help with that hey Marcus he says I've been broken for the past week just knowing that throughout life black people have been being gaslighted abused and as Al Sharpton said yesterday living with a knee on our collective necks as black people for the entirety of the history of this country. I stand with the protesters. Now, as I've been trying to better myself as a market trader, I'm dealing with an even more powerful stream of stress, but I was able to be... Sorry about that. Good for you, Marcus, for acknowledging yourself and your feelings. Because I think everybody's trying to figure it out. Everybody's trying to manage their emotional state and 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 give room for all of the things that it's bringing up because it's cultural then it's humanity it's global it's country i mean we can keep spreading this thing out right it's 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 bringing up all kinds of things for us to grapple with within ourselves emotionally but and i hope that somehow some way we always come back to how can we express um no no want you to have the space to express that and be where you are and I'm glad that you were able to find some good in the midst of it all I really just want to create the space for us to feel the way we feel because I think there's power in that there's a level of vulnerability in that and there's power in vulnerability it's just a time to feel and I think that the beauty in that for me to speak on that then um, is that because we are feeling on such a deep level is connecting us to parts of ourselves that have been desensitized for quite some time. Parts of ourselves that have been selfish and only thinking about our own personal mission without necessarily thinking about your fellow human being. Parts of ourselves that's awakening uh, our humanity in a way that we haven't been awakened either ever, ever or in a very long time, at least in my generation since I've been on the planet and that's powerful I, I, I think it's so beautiful to see the people you know the protesters from across the globe saying that you're not alone we see it and we're ready for change too it's showing us that more of us are together than divided I think that's so beautiful I really do 
And I, I for myself, am seeing a change that I'd like to see. I think we're going to keep taking steps. And this is a part of it. What a great awakening. But it's coming through a lot of pain. It's coming through a lot of fear. It's coming through a lot of upheaval. And, you know, we're just kind of challenged right now to be in a state of allowance for it all. And hopefully, uh, don't let uh, anger or, you know, like the, 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 those, those very heightened emotional spaces damage um, the people and the things around you as much as you can. Um, but how am I doing? Not your feelings about what's going on. I'm doing okay. I mean, I've expressed myself in my previous video the other day. I pretty much spoke on how I was feeling that day. I feel encouraged though. I mean, I deal with the, the influx of emotions like everybody else, but within it all, I still feel encouraged. I, I trust that we're getting order out of chaos. And I guess I am in a state of allowance for knowing that this is a part of the process. The ugly is a part of the process to get to the beauty. I always come back to that. I always come back to that. So thank you for asking. Uh, yes, and thank you for your clarity. I follow everything and can feel your pain. I hope change is going to come. Shirley says, uh, November can't come soon enough. What's in November? Oh, the elections? A lot. Uh, Didi says, we don't have a race problem in Japan, but our media and many Japanese people are angry. I hope everyone's changing peace. Yeah. Excuse me. It's a humanity problem. It's a humanity problem. And that's what I think is beautiful about what we're seeing. It's, 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 it's tapping into our feeling space as humanity. Humanity is saying, hey, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, wait, this needs to evolve. It's time for this evolution. The evolution will be televised. The evolution will be televised. That's what we're seeing. We're evolving. And that may not be the prettiest. Sometimes you got to unearth things. You got to be willing to look at your stuff to change it. If you don't know it's there, like awareness is the key, first key to change, right? So if you don't know it's there, how can you know to work on it, to release it, to love it away, whatever word you'd like to use that speaks to dealing with it. Hey, Carl. Kendra says, trying to remember that there are more of us with humanity than without. Yeah, man. I wrote you so beautiful. Thank you, Michael. Um, yeah. Like, I hope you're encouraged by what we're seeing, the, 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 the solidarity, how many people are coming out. No matter that they may be having their awakening right now, will you allow them to have that? Will you allow yourself to believe that it's happening and not think it's fake, right? Like, what do you want to see? What do you want to believe? I mean, we get to choose either way. Might as well choose something that empowers you. Choose something that aligns with love. Um, what is the vision that you guys would like to see? Like if, if, if life could show up the way that you wanted it to, and there's no right or wrong answer. If life could show up the way that you wanted it to tomorrow, what would you want to see? Write it in the chat, please. I want to I wanna see what thoughts are out there. What do you want to see? And I don't want you to like, Shut yourself down from thinking that it's possible. Like, get your sensor out of the way and just allow yourself to dream. Dream so incredibly huge, so incredibly big. If life could show up tomorrow the way that you wanted it to, what would it look like? What would you want to see? Dee says, I believe in love. Bless up. I do too. 
Kendra says, I think most people have finally had it with the hate and division. Yeah. And, 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 and being in quarantine helped us to just be with all of our stuff, personally and collectively. What a beautiful thing. It hurts, right? But it's like birthing a child is painful. <laughs> but right once they say that the child is birthed, the mother forgets all about the pain. Usually, maybe that's not everybody's parent. But you know what I'm saying. There's this beautiful miracle here. But it took, you know, some pain to get the miracle out. I think that's what we're dealing with right now. That's what we're experiencing. Um, Didi says, I want to see true love. Didi, um, flush that out. What does true love look like to you? Doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. What does true love look like to you? Nothing's too fluffy, Pollyanna. Nothing's too weird. I want you guys to express yourself. Don't be afraid to say it because this is going to help us to we define what tomorrow is right now. We define what's right right now. We define we define it with our decisions, with our choices, with our focus, with how we choose to see the world. So how what do you guys want to see? Because a lot of us, we, we could get caught up in a space of complaining that you don't even realize that you're not focusing on what you do want. You could get so focused on unearthing the, the hell on earth that you got to be careful not to bring the hell back up to the surface with you. Like, yes, we see it, but don't stay in there too long because it might, it might take you off path with the vision you really want for humanity, for yourself. So what do you want to see? Kendra says, I want that purpose. I want that puppies and rainbows dream where hate doesn't exist, ugly disappears. How do, and, and, and you know, while the other answers are coming in, how do you guys think we can achieve something like that? There's a lot of beautiful hearts in here, a lot of intelligent people in here. How does something like uh, hate disappear? Now, I'm going to say this. We wouldn't know up without down. We wouldn't know light without dark. But if we want to resonate more in light, what do we do for that? I'm my first, I'm gonna throw something in the pot. I say we practice empathy. What is empathy? It's when we see that someone is going through something, maybe we don't understand it, but we're at least willing to try and understand it. You're willing to kind of get in the trenches with somebody and say, I don't know how you feel, but I can understand. Feel, you feeling sad? I felt sad before. And I, I, I'm just here with you until we get out of this thing together. Or, you know, I can understand how you feel because I, I exp experienced that as well. Just practicing a space where you're making room for somebody else to feel the way they feel, maybe without much judgment. Think the way they think. Be the way they are. Forgive them. I don't know. Practice empathy. This is just my, I'm just uh, feeding into Kendra's dream. Renata says, I want to see love and the continuous evolution into equality, not just for a second, but continuous. Bless up. How do we express love? What are different ways we express love? Nancy says, peace, people living and working together as a community, taking care of each other, people embracing everyone's culture and religions, no fear of your neighbors. Bless up. Taking care of the elderly. Tapping into the wisdom of the culture bringing it forward, making room for everybody to be right where they are um, with the, the experiences that they've had and trying to understand them. I'm just throwing stuff out here. Uh, Shirley says, I want to see a world where we all live and respect and love each other for who we are. We are humans. Thank you, Shirley. So maybe that's something that we can do is just think about from those visions that we put out there, what's the next step that you would take in order to have that be a reality? What's the next step that you would take? And it doesn't have to be some grandiose step, right? It doesn't have to be something that's like, you know, whatever you may be comparing yourself to that you think it needs to be. It could just be to hold the vision. Be consistent about holding the vision. That could be a hard thing to do right now. In the midst of all this energy, that's a major, major contribution to hold that vision. You never know just by holding your in that energetic space what it might do for the collective, who you might help just that comes into your space, your energy space, how you might shift them or change them just because you're holding that vision inside of yourself. That could be a contribution. You may not know what to say yet. You may not know what to do with your body yet.
Mike says, I want to see my biracial seven-year-old see the best in humanity and live a, a world where he is not judged based on his color, his parents' colors, and being able to be, be who he is, a creative little kid. I hear you loud and clear. Kendra says, yes, what you said. I don't think the hate and ugly can truly disappear, but we can keep trying to change hearts and minds. The old, kill them with the kindness adage, I hear you. Yeah, or just being more of it so that it's the dominant energy on the planet. Because those energies do give contrast and texture to life. When we deal with things like this, guess what? We're growing. Like significant change can come from significant discomfort. So we need those things that challenge us, that push us. A lot of us have things, shadow aspects of ourselves. We hold different aspects of hate in ourselves, possibly, or different aspects of pain, anger in ourselves that need to be dealt with. It's not just a collective thing. This can make us go within and do the healing within ourselves, too, right? So, And that's coming from being uncomfortable. So it serves a purpose, but, you know, maybe making it the dominant energy on the planet. Jordae says, I would love to see a peaceful world with no stress, no doubts, and to experience it all with my king and baby speak. Dee Dee says, true love between our brothers and sisters. Bless up. Beloved king, hey, by making the reality a true fact and just doing it and pushing through, yes, taking action on that space. Tanita, welcome, honey. We're talking about what we do want to see. We, we, we definitely get the projections of what we don't want to see on a regular basis. So we're talking about now, what is it that we do want to see? And I would love to hear your amazing voice. Um, if you could get on camera, I would bring you on camera. Yeah. So. Is there anything else you guys want to express today? How are you feeling um, after this talk or do right now during this talk? I feel interesting. How's your focus? Is your focus on your feet? Is it grounding you? Take your attention back to your feet and let it ground you. Visualizations, yes. We have to work these mirror neurons. Hello. Hello. Uh, Brad says, I want to see joy, love, and happiness in the world without pain, suffering, sadness, division, and racism. I hear you. I care about you all so much. Thank you, Kendra. Hey, Barry. Nancy says, education and a good slap of reality. I think people have to go through the uncomfortable to be comfortable, kind of like the reversal. Yes, ma'am. What significant change comes through comfort? Not much. It's usually when your back is against the wall or when you just, it's like you, you hit rock bottom. You notice how some of the most significant change comes from like the worst circumstances. So it's a blessing in disguise for right now. It's, you know, and some of the things, the hurtful things we see are a part of that process. Oh, my pleasure, Dee Dee. Thank you for being here. Good, Jorday. Thank you. This is what I'm accessing as well. We got more stuff. This, you know, we're still in the midst of it all. We're kind of in the midst of it all right now. So finding our, you know, don't forget to disengage when you need to disengage. <clears throat> don't forget to control what you can control. Give yourself different stimuli to give you to generate a different emotion or feeling that you might want to have in the moment. Don't forget to utilize nature. Go out there, take some deep breaths without your mask, you know, put it out in that open space and take some deep breaths.
practice empathy for each other because everybody's going through it. Especially if you're allowing yourself to feel. You got it, Brad. Kendra says, thanks for letting us say what we want to try to say. It's not easy to get out. It's the, yeah, this is difficult for a lot of people. And I know there's still a lot of repressed emotion in here. I know it. Uh, Mike says, it really is up to the young people again. How do we really share this with a kid like my son? You shouldn't have to worry about such pain or fear or racism. Prejudice is not born with it is learned. This week in school, we had a deep chat with the eighth graders and they were so angry and vocal even in the distance learning they most the most powerful conversation of the year wow good um we need to be there support guide and inspire young people yeah that you know there's a there's a um a statement that a lot of people say and i i, I rock with it because i like it and it's like we came here at this time for a reason every single one of us is here for a reason at this this poignant time the kids that are here experiencing it for whatever reason, God chose it that way. And so maybe they are the change that we're going to see. Maybe they do need to feel the way they're feeling so that they have enough energy motivating them to take necessary sustained action until we see what we want to see. Maybe if it's not as impactful as it, as it is, it won't produce the sustained action and love muscle that we're developing in order to get the change we want to see. All of it being purposeful, even as painful as it is, especially as painful as it is. It's the one thing that's going to move us to real change. The things we say we want to see, you know that we, we're gonna, we like to retreat to our comfort zones. Who wants to be uncomfortable? Not until you're forced into a space do you see your level of resilience sometimes. Not until we're forced into a place do we see what we're actually capable of. Not until we're forced out of our comfort zones, right? Do we get birthed into this new reality because it's almost like, well, what else is left? More of this hurt and pain? No, I, we got to do what we got to do to get out of here. But it's bringing forth, it's birthing the miracle. So hopefully, so maybe even being in a state of allowance that is here, embracing and being willing to find the good in, in the fact that it's here. This level of pain, this level of anger, this level of angst, this level of anxiety, this level of unrest, where's the good? is finally pushing us to tap back into desensitized places that have been lying dormant in a lot of us, right? It's finally taking some of us out of numbed places. It's finally reconnecting us to our humanity on a collective level. It's powerful. It's powerful. And it took something of this gravity, of this level, to get us to do it. Wow. Wow. So now that it's here, let's embrace it. Let's let's find the good and let's be a part, you know, get up, disengage when you need to. And then go back to that vision that we talked about. What is it that you want to see? And if you could just hold the vision, that's powerful. That takes that's effort in the midst of all of this. And then letting your vision inspire your next step. Who do you need, to, who would you become to have this, or even if it's just right where you are, who, who, what next action step would you take to have your vision become a reality? Who, would, who, who's play, who are the players? How are you contributing? Thanks for being such a navigator through this spiritual storm. Well, my pleasure. You see the pain inside my soul, Mark, Michael, really? <laughs> Can you see the beauty too? Because it's right there in tandem. If, if, if the pain is there, the beauty is there as well. 
because I see the beauty in what's happening too. They're in tandem. That's another thing for me that's important is showing up authentically with all of it. Because maybe if I do that, it give other people, give let them give themselves permission to do it too. want to express anything else? Are you keeping your attention in your feet? Allowing yourself to be grounded right here? I think everyone has pain in their soul right this second. That's supposed to be so that we can have the motivation to move for the right way of love. Let us be. Dee Dee says the change can begin with each heart, each home, then share with others. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, Tanita. Like, honor where you are. That's why this space is created. Because I don't know if people, like, it's okay to feel what you're feeling. And show up like that. Yeah. Yeah, man. How's everybody feeling now? Is your attention in your feet? Don't move them. Just be aware that they're there. It's a way to get you grounded real quick. Good. Kendra says she's calmer. How's everybody else? And you don't have to be calmer if you're not calmer. You don't have to be calmer if you're not calmer. You can feel whatever way you feel. Hey, Lisa. Oh, it's okay. You came in at the perfect time, right? It's kind of, it's overcast here today. It's interesting. How's it? The weather can be such a mood shifter, I swear. All right, y'all. I will continue to follow 
what I'm urged to do because I wasn't expecting to talk today. But I really do uh, I really do want to assist us with bridging the gap from where we are to where we, we choose to be, what we want to see for ourselves, what we want to see for our lives moving forward. Okay. Definitely less worn and more peace. Good, Tanita. Very overcast. Right, moon in here. Yeah. Man. Brad says, a sad reality is you are the only person I can turn to when I feel like crying. Oh, and I feel like the world is against me as a man. Your inspiring words can never fail to reach my heart and soul. Oh, my goodness. You are greatly in my pleasure, honey. You have such a beautiful heart, Brad. And thank you for that expression because you're probably speaking to a lot of people. There's a lot of tears right now. A lot of uh, bewilderment. A lot of unrest. Uh, anxiety. Um, if you're a sensitive person or an empathic person, you feel. There's a lot to feel right now. There's a lot to feel. So, don't forget to control what you can control. If you need to disengage, disengage. Give yourself new stimuli that can make you feel better. And we're going to get through this. We are going to get through this. We are getting through this. We are in the beautiful struggle right now. My, uh, one of my loved ones reminded me of that phrase again today because that's something I like to say regularly the beautiful struggle and that's where we are okay so I'm sending so much love to y'all if you ever need to unload bro okay good thank you right oh my gosh right to need it like there's just so much to feel and if you're if you're uh, if you choose to uh to, to, to be um, sympathetic, empathetic, uh, present to what's going on, you get, you, whew, right? So, don't forget the power of the breath. Don't forget to control what you can control and give, and nurture, who's not, please nurture yourself during this time. Take care of you. Come on, Tanita. She said, beautiful struggle and righteous anger. I think a lot of people are afraid to feel some of these emotions. So, yeah. All right, y'all. I'm sending you much love. I hope this was um, I hope this was helpful. And I will see you soon. Have an amazing weekend. Okay? All right. Bye.